Electrolysis means breaking up a compound using electricity. Electro, meaning electricity. Lysis, meaning to split up. This diagram, this diagram shows the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. This is just containing sodium ions and chlorine ions. It's heated up so that they turn into a liquid. Here you can see the sodium ions. Here you can see the chloride ions. These two lines, these are the electrodes. They're hooked up by a wire to a battery or cell. The liquid is known as the electrolyte. The chloride ions are negative and are attracted to the positive electrode known as the anode. The sodium ions are positive and are attracted to the negative electrode known as the cathode. The way to remember which is which is panic. Positive anode, negative is cathode. Another word for the positive ions are cations. So the cations go to the cathode. A word for the negative ions are anions. So the anions go to the anode. The chloride ions are attracted to the positive anode. They lose one electron. Each chloride ion loses one electron. The two chlorine ions join together forming chlorine, which is a gas, which comes off and you see bubbling, and two electrons. The electrons then travel up the wire into the cathode. In the cathode, the electrons join up with the sodium ions forming sodium metal. This sodium drops to the bottom. These are examples of half equations. They're showing what happens at each of the electrodes. In half equations, we always show the electrons being gained or lost. When the chloride ions lose electrons, this process is known as oxidation. When the sodium ions gain electrons, this process is known as reduction. The way to remember it is oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. Oil rig. The sodium can be used in street lamps and as a coolant in some nuclear reactors. In this example, we've now got sodium solution. Sodium solution is completely different to molten sodium. In molten sodium, we just had sodium and chloride ions. In solution, we've also got water. Water splits up into H plus and OH minus. So we've got four ions to deal with, two negative and two positive ions. At the positive electrode, as, as before, the chloride ions are attracted to the positive electrode. They each give up one electron and form chlorine gas, which escapes and you see bubbling at the positive electrode. The difference with sodium chloride solution is at the negative electrode. At the negative electrode, you have both sodium and hydrogen competing for the electron. The one that wins is the least reactive. Hydrogen is is less reactive than sodium, so it gets the electrons. The equation, the half equation, is written here. You have two sodium positive ions gaining two electrons. So each one is gaining one electron, but there's two of them because you need two hydrogen atoms or ions to form hydrogen gas as it's a diatomic molecule, the same as the chlorine. So the Hydrogen gas escapes off, and again, you'll see bubbling at the negative electrode. You may be thinking, why does the hydroxide ion not get released at the positive electrode? The reason for this is quite complex. The thing, way you need to remember it for GCSE is simply that the most simple ion at the negative electrode is the one which loses the electrons and is released. For the negative electrode, it is the one which is the least reactive, so in this case, hydrogen. You need to be able to know what is formed for the following three compounds. Let's consider copper chloride. 
First off, at the negative cathode. You've got competition between the copper positive ions and the H+, plus because it's in solution. Copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so copper is formed. And you'd see bits of copper formed sticking to the electrode. The same thing happens for copper sulfate, so you get copper forming. For sodium sulfate, as sodium is more reactive than hydrogen, hydrogen is less reactive than sodium, hydrogen is formed, H2. At the anode, the positive anode, you have the negative ions being attracted. For copper chloride, that's the Cl- and also the OH- from the aqueous water from the solution. Chlorine is simpler, so you get chlorine being formed. For the copper sulfate, the hydroxide ion is simpler than the sulfate ion, so you get oxygen forming. We'll talk about more of that in a minute. The same thing happens for a sodium sulfate. The hydroxide is simpler, so we get oxygen forming. With any sulfate solution, so copper sulfate or sodium sulfate solution, so with water, the sulfate ions and the hydroxide ions both compete to give up electrons. The hydroxide ions win because they are the simplest. So the hydroxide ions give up their electrons. The equation to show what happens is down below. You have hydroxide ions giving up electrons. But rather than forming hydroxide, what you form is oxygen gas. So this is a gas. This then leaves. So you'll see bubbling oxygen gas molecules leaving. It, it also forms water and the electrons, which again travel up round back to the negative electrode. To balance this equation, I have to put a 4 here, and therefore each hydroxide is losing one electron, so a 4 here and a 2 here. 